my league card, in case you were curious. Pokemon Shield version. <clears throat> yes, we are now in generation 8 of the beloved Nintendo franchise, and the new Pokemon games Sword and Shield have come out swinging. And I was personally looking forward to this game big time. Why? Because of the graphics, let's be honest. And I knew I was gonna get Shield the minute they said that Galarian Ponytop was Shield exclusive. I was like, okay, I gotta have one of those. Cause look how fabulous it is. And I still don't have one. But anyways, yeah, Pokemon Sword and Shield take place in the new region, the Galar region. And you know how most of the regions are based off of, you know, real world cities. Like Unova is based on New York, Kalos is based on Paris, Alola is based on Hawaii. Galar is based on the United Kingdom. Yeah, the good old UK. And it really shows here. I mean, you have Pokemon based off of teapots. All the gym battles take place in these big soccer stadiums, or I guess I should say football stadiums. It's so based off of Great Britain that whenever the dialogue is going, you know, on the bottom of the screen and the character's talking, I hear it in my head with a British accent or sometimes even a Scottish accent. I, I hear Marnie with a Scottish accent. That's just what I heard in my head. So the basic premise of the game is pretty much what you'd come to expect from a Pokemon game at this point. You're a young guy or girl, depending on what you prefer. You're setting out on your Pokemon journey with your friend slash rival Hop. His name is Hop. And then the story unfurls. It gets a little more epic. Legends about the history of the Gala region come into play. And now we have our new Pokemon game. And I have heard some negative criticisms of this game. Like some people are not huge fans of it, which hey, to each their own. But I gotta say after being this game's story, the whole way through, I gotta say they're wrong. This game is awesome. I mean, factually speaking, opinions can't be wrong, but they're wrong. I thoroughly loved playing through this game. First of all, the characters. The characters in this game are actually probably the most sympathetic characters ever in a main series Pokemon game, I dare say. And you actually have a few rivals in this game. You have like three of them, which to some hardcore fans or Gen 1ers out there, that might be bothersome, but it's not to me because they're great characters. Hop is like your main rival. He's the one I actually like the least out of your three rivals because he's the most friendly of them. And, and I'm like, yeah, in some ways I'm a hardcore fan. I like rivals to be like antagonists, like Blue in the originals. Hop, like how in Sun and Moon, he's more friendly towards you, but he does have that little bit of edge where he's like, he wants to be the champion and beat you in the process of becoming the champion. And he doesn't hide it. He's like, yeah, all right, you're great. That being said, I'm gonna wipe your face with my champion status. But it does get under your skin the fact that his dream, his life goal is to become the champion of the Gala region. So I felt bad whenever I beat him in a battle and, and you battle him a lot in this game. And never once did I lose to him. Which made me feel sorry for the kid because he has no ill intent. He's a good kid and he just wants to beat you. So props to this game for making me feel bad for a character. But I do like the other rival characters better because they are less friendly towards you. Prime example, Big. Dude, this guy is a dick. He's the best. Bade is a straight up throwback to the original rivals of Gen 1 and 2. He's stuck up. He's conceited. Like when you first see him, he's like, you're just in my path. You have no business fighting someone as great as me. Except he says it in a British accent. You got no business battling someone as great as me. First time I saw him like this, I was like, oh my God, I haven't seen a rival like this in a while. Bear in mind, I skipped Generation 5 entirely and half of Generation 6. That was my break from Pokemon. So it has been a while since I've seen a rival who was pretty much a sheer antagonist. So seeing that again, it was awesome. Bade really is a dick. He's great. The third rival character is Marnie, and Marnie's the character in the Pokemon game that finally got me to be like, all right, can we just have a romance in Pokemon games? I mean, yeah, I understand that Pokemon is ultimately a kid's game, even though there are people older than me who play these games at this point. And even the anime completely blocks off the romantic aspects within the main characters anyway. But just the way Marnie behaves around you, she kind of acts, I don't want to say flirtatiously, but more like shy and timid in that shy and timid, I have a crush on you kind of way. I don't know, call me weird, I don't care, but I just would like to have seen that go through all the way. I know there are Poke fans out there who agree with me, just Come on, speak up. Bless ya. As for the other characters in the game, they're also great. You have Leon, who is, as of this point, the undefeated champion of the Gala region. He's the one you set out to beat from the beginning. Which is great because throughout the entire game, they build up the fact that he has never lost a battle in his life. So throughout the game, for me, this was my experience anyway, the game is really easy. You know, again, just like Alpha Sapphire and most of Sun and Moon, there was not a single battle that I lost. I was like, okay, this is gonna be easy. But again, throughout the game, they build Leon up as unbeatable. So when I finally got to Leon at the end of the game, I was like, oh my god, I don't know if I'm gonna win or not. And yeah, I'll be honest, first time I battled him, he beat me. Yeah, his Pokemon are hard to beat. So after that, I had to take a little bit back for myself. I had to train up my team some more. And then the second time I battled him, I beat him. But even in that second battle, I was like, I don't know if I'm gonna win or not. It's good stuff. And finally, there is Sonya. Sonya is the one who kind of pushes the legendary aspect of the story forward. The story that is unfurling as your journey progresses. A lot of it is because of her. And yeah, I'll just say it, because I know you're thinking it. 
Rule 34 is strong with this game. I'm not even ashamed to say it, because I know I'm not the only one. I don't know if it's weird to have a crush on a video game character who does not exist in real life, but... Sonya, man. Just saying. But really, let's get to the star of this game. It's not the characters, it's not the gameplay, although both are great. It's the graphics. The graphics are the reason to get these new Pokemon games. Especially if you throw it up on a big screen like I did. Oh my god, like, the landscapes are amazing, they're immersive, but the cities are just bigger than they've ever been in a Pokemon game. Or a main series one, anyway. In fact, I will, without blinking an eyelash, say that this is the most immersive main series core Pokemon game ever. Because you look at the size of some of these buildings, you're like, oh my god, like, they're huge! Like the big old tower at Winden, or Hammerlock Stadium, like, Hammerlock in general. Graphically speaking, this is the Pokemon game that we fans have been waiting for all our lives. Again, try to throw it up on a big screen if you can, because it just makes it better. I have a nice flat screen TV so it's high def and with surround sound, yeah, it sucks you right in. As for the story itself, it's really good. I will say to me, it didn't feel as epic as the story in Sun and Moon did. Sun and Moon, like these creatures were coming from another dimension and this insane lady is trying to merge with one of them? That was insanity. The story in Sword and Shield doesn't get as crazy as that, at least not in my opinion. Nothing in the story really blew my mind like the end of Sun and Moon where I was like, holy so the thing in the story that ended up resonating with me was the sympathetic characters. They are what saved the story from getting boring. And the fact that there are cinematic cutscenes, which, yeah, at this point, they're not new to Pokemon anymore. But still, again, with the graphics being as good as they are, and on a big screen TV, the cutscenes are just that much more engrossing. Now, one of the biggest complaints I've heard about this game is that the entire national Pokedex is not featured. At this point, there are like almost 900 different species of Pokemon out there, because the franchise has been around for over 20 years now. But fans were pissed. They were like, how could you not have every single Pokemon in this game? I mean, you have enough space for it, just why don't you have every single Pokemon in this game? I personally don't have a problem with it. I mean, there are still 400 different Pokemon you can catch in this game. 400's a big number, guys. There are a lot of different Pokemon featured in this game. I've beaten the entire story, I've clocked in 35 hours of gameplay, and I think I've still only completed, like, about half the decks? That is crazy. And honestly, realistically speaking, do you think all almost 900 species of Pokemon would live in this one region? No! It just logically makes sense that not every single species of Pokemon would be featured in this game because not every single species of Pokemon lives in Galar. But 400 of them do. I think that's enough. Because 400 is a bigger number than you think. And they brought back battling wild Pokemon. How great is that? I hated that they didn't have that in Let's Go Pikachu or Eevee. In the wild, you would just throw the Pokeball like Pokemon Go and then you would just catch it. I was like, that's stupid. Apparently, I wasn't alone with that opinion because in this game, it's back to battling wild Pokemon. But once again, you do see them roaming around in the wild in the tall grass like you did in Let's Go. And I really like that in Let's Go, and I really like it here. Now, for the past couple generations, you know, there's been a new thing in the battle system that's like the new super cool thing you can do. Generation 6, it was Mega Evolution. Generation 7, it was Z-Moves. Now, in Generation 8, we got a thing called Dynamax. You got a Dynamax band on your wrist, and once per battle, you can activate it and turn your Pokemon enormous. Depending on the context, they'll either be enormous for just a few turns or throughout the rest of the battle. So when you have two enormous Pokemon in a stadium battling against each other with these huge moves like max lightning, just huge thunderstorms come down on the opponent. It's really cool looking. I think it's really cool. It does add to the whole larger than life feeling of this game because everything in this game is just so big and sometimes that includes the Pokemon now. It's awesome. I love it. And as for the new Pokemon themselves, I like a lot of the designs. In fact, I don't think there are any that I don't like. I guess my least favorite one would be the teapot one. I forget what it's called, but my team in this game consists of really cool looking Pokemon, which is always been necessary for me. What can I say? When it comes to Pokemon, I'm still seven years old up here. And it's funny because before this game came out, I, I knew more or less who I wanted on my team. But as I progressed in the game, my team just is not what I originally wanted it to be. Which is not a bad thing, that's just how life is sometimes. I still think my team is pretty awesome. I ended up with Inteleon, Boltund, Colossal, Maractus, Sandaconda, and Scorch. And let that sink in. I never thought I would have a Generation 5 Pokemon on my main team ever. Because again, Generation 5 is the one I skipped because I thought it looked stupid. But I caught this Maractus and I was like, alright, well, I don't really have a solid grass type on my team yet. What the heck? And then Maractus grew on me to the point where now I'm like, Maractus is actually kind of cute. How? How do you make a cactus cute? That's how. Just kind of hops around on its one leg and dances. Yaw. And Scorch, because be honest, that looks awesome. Fire Bug. Cool combo. Now when it comes to bonding with your team, this time around we have a new mechanic called Pokemon Camp. Basically, as long as you're not indoors, you can set up this camp 
where like you have a tent and you can play with all the members of your team at once, which is really cool. I like it, but you can't pet them, which to me is like the big thing about these interactive Pokemon things in these past couple generations. Pokemon Refresh and Sun and Moon, you could do that and I loved it in there. So I do miss that, but you have toys, you have a ball you can throw and usually my Bolton will catch it because She's the dog. You can also cook food and eat it with your Pokemon. You know, it helps you bond with them. It actually gives them experience points, so that's pretty cool. And the more you play with your Pokemon, the more experience points they'll earn at the end of it. Just this game did not have to do that. I would have been fine with just the camp mechanic without the experience points, but the fact that they added that in is great. And the legendaries, okay. There are only a couple legendaries in this game. This game does not feature all the legendaries of the past generations, just the new ones. And there are a couple in here, but only one of them was revealed before the game came out. So I'm not gonna tell you about the other one cause I would consider that a spoiler. In Pokemon Shield, the main legendary is Zamazenta. The story surrounding Zamazenta and the other legendary Zashin, who is the main legendary in Pokemon Sword, is really cool. And you actually have to catch it by battling it. Unlike, you know, previous generations where the legendary just joins your team for a story based reason. I didn't like that. It took away from the frustrating fun of a Pokemon game that I was used to. But I'm not gonna lie, when I finally got to Zamazenta, I just used the Master Ball my first turn. Why? Because Zamazenta is the last legendary you encounter. You do encounter another one before this one. So I'm not gonna use this Master Ball for anything else. And I didn't want it to just sit around in my bag forever collecting dust. I don't even use Zamazenta anyway, because I already have my awesome team. So there that is. Last but not least, I have got to talk about the music in this game. Oh my god. The music in this game is really good. The battle music when you're fighting against a wild Pokemon, at first it didn't really sound that Pokemon-ish to me. You know, Pokemon battle music always has a certain vibe to it. I personally wasn't feeling that vibe from the wild Pokemon battle music in this game, but it is still good music. It's fun, it's catchy. Certain tracks that stand out to me in this game are, first of all, the shopping music, the boutique. You can once again customize your trainer's look as I've shown you with my league card, which is once again a great feature. The gym leader battle music is awesome because you hear the stadium crowd cheering around you. You hear them chanting with the music. It's awesome, it's so catchy. You're like, yeah, all right, I'm really enjoying this battle just because of the music. Again, surround sound. Not everyone's gonna have that. I'm just telling you about my experience though. And the music when you're battling hop. It's also really catchy. And I've seen YouTube comments on like the video featuring this music. One comment said it sounds like a Mario Kart track. Yep, totally does. But hey, Mario Kart music is awesome. So there you go. Hop's music is also awesome. So in the end, I've got to say that Pokemon Shield is one of the best main series Pokemon games I've ever played. It's super immersive. The graphics just suck you into its world like no main series Pokemon game has ever done before. And I know that's saying a lot, but I mean it. The characters are very well written, they're sympathetic, you feel for a lot of them, if not all of them. Even Bade, like without spoiling anything, something happens that is a bad thing for him. And he was a dick, sure, but I was like, I'm sorry man, I felt bad for him. I was like, that sucks. I didn't think I would feel bad for this dick character, but I did. The new Pokemon species are awesome, Dynamax is super cool, the music is just fantastic. I'm just wondering, like, what are we gonna get in a year's time? How are they gonna up from this? I don't know but I can't wait to find out. So Pokemon Shield, did you get it? Have you played it or did you get Sword instead? What do you think about it? Who's on your team? And what do you think Game Freak might come out with next year? Whatever you think, go ahead and leave a comment. And don't forget to subscribe.